Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another stream in the K Native series. Uh, my name is Sayam Parhak, and I'm a CNCF ambassador uh, working as director of technical evangelism at Sivo, building the next gen cloud platform. Uh, so, uh, today uh, we are uh, doing the K Native part three, uh, which is the serving deep dive. Uh, so, we have already done the introduction, uh, the origin story, and the governance uh, by Matt and Ville. Uh, that was stream one. Then we have done the K Native 101 session uh, where Carlos gave uh, introduction uh, to K Native, how it works, uh, what is serving introduction, what is uh, eventing, uh, small demos on how to set up from the documentation K Native dot dev. Uh, so uh, the really cool docs, and we also see uh, we have we have also seen that how it works on. Uh, CBO Kubernetes platform, uh, where I spinned up a Kubernetes cluster in the back back end, which is K3S based, and did all the steps that uh, uh, Carlos mentioned, and I was able to uh, you know get the Hello World app up and running uh, within just a matter of minutes uh, with a TLS uh, endpoint, with a HTTPS, uh, so all those fancy things. Uh, so I think that was really cool. And uh, now we are continuing the Knative uh, you know journey and the Knative series with uh, with the part three, which is Knative Deep Dive. And uh, uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, I see already a lot of folks have joined. Uh, so hi uh, to all. And really glad to have uh, Dave uh, with us, who is joining us today, who will be uh, telling all about Knative uh, serving deep dive revisions, uh, what you can do with them, uh, tag and the digest resolution, auto TLS, domain mapping, a bit about auto scaling, and a really, really cool demo. I have actually seen the glimpse of it. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to see that in action. Uh, so that would be pretty interesting uh, what Dave has to show uh, today. Uh, so we'll be seeing some 3D things. Uh, so, <laughs> Dave, uh, welcome and uh, please introduce yourself to the community. Hey, my name is uh, Dave Perisowski. I'm based in Toronto, Canada, and I uh, work for VMware, but before that I was at a company called Pivotal. Um, and for the last few years, I've been working on Knative. So um, Pivotal was, uh, I think Google, um, Pivotal, Red Hat, IBM, were kind of working on Knative um, for the last little bit. Um, and I've been, I poked in a bunch of different areas within Knative, but uh, for the last few years, I've been in the serving section. So that's why I'm going to do the demo today and kind of do a deep dive on it. Um, any questions, I guess, before I start? Uh, no, just just uh, one thing I want to say. Uh, so if you are new to the channel, uh, please care to subscribe because that what keeps me going on and you know bring awesome people like Dave uh, to learn together. Uh, so and if you're watching on Twitch, then please do a follow over there. And also, uh, I would like to say that you ha you people have already done Twitter threads on the on the streams and what you have learned from them. Uh, so please continue that and. Uh, you know, you can do the same for this particular stream, like what you learn uh, from the start to end. Uh, so in the end of the series, uh, there is something special for the one who has done for all the series, the Twitter threads, uh, which I like the most. Uh, so I'll be doing a special giveaway for that particular person. Uh, so make sure you keep on doing that. And I really love reading those, uh, you know, the summaries of what uh, you have made out from the stream and what you'll be doing next with that. So that that's pretty interesting for uh, myself and even for the folks like Dave or you know whosoever has been presenting to see uh, you know what people have actually learned uh, from what they have shared so really like that so with that uh, we let's let's start with with you know uh, maybe a quick recap of, of uh, uh, serving what it is yeah sure um matt kind of highlighted it briefly um and carlos went to a deep dive um and what matt described um i think it was also like a google marketing thing like there's a, there's sort of like a spectrum right and this is sort of like uh, infrastructure that you manage. And then over here, it's like, this is being managed by you. So kind of like at this end, you would have like virtual machines and like also kind of like metal, bare metal. And then like all the way over here, what would be a thing you deploy is really just kind of like code uh, maybe like a function. Um, so there's sort of like a, a spectrum of um, uh, essentially the infrastructure that you would manage. 
And here there's very little, you literally just manage your business logic and over here you're managing like everything. And sort of like where does serving fall into the spectrum? I would kind of maybe say a bit more to the right here where, um, hey, what do we offer? And what we offer is we do a whole bunch of management where you're like, you're not um, spinning up VMs or whatever. That's sort of like managed by uh, Kubernetes. So you can maybe say K8 is so sort of here. Um, but if you come to us with a container, we can do a bunch of things for you. Um, so maybe I'll just stop in serving here. And what are those things? Um, well, we do HP routing for you. Um, we also do things like scaling. So it's also request-based scaling. So if there are no requests that come in, then um, your container is scaled down. This is like, for example, something that uh, Kubernetes does not manage for you, but like, for example, key native serving does. Um, and we also do sort of like higher level routing concerns. So for example, um, uh, similar to like what Envoy can do rather than you programming that manually, we pr provide like a higher level abstraction so that we can, you can do rollbacks using traffic splitting um, and also create like higher level domains that back your service. And, and kind of like what Carlos also highlighted, like um, give you sort of a certificate out of the box so you can hit your services using uh, SSL or TLS. Um, and that's sort of like the the spectrum. And this is kind of like what Matt was referring to and Google had some marketing regarding this. And I thought it was a great way to kind of like divvy up this like managed to autonomous infrastructure. Um, and from there, uh, let me like get out of here. I'll, <laughs> I'll clear the screen by scrolling. Um, so. Be, let me do it here. Based on that, so it's like, hey, what is then the first introduction to users for, um, uh, I don't know why that doesn't delete. Oh, here. Uh, first intro to serving. And that's what we call sort of like a key native service. Um, so this would be like the first intro, and this is sort of like what the abstraction we want people to work with. This is sort of like you create um, a service, you give it a container image, and if you if that's all you provide, then there's a whole bunch of things you get out of the box. So you get like a route, um, and then it, it will scale to zero, and we'll serve it and scale it up when requests come in. But there's actually a little bit more underneath the Kinetis service. So for example, this is sort of just like a a resource, a Kubernetes resource that then sort of like combines a route and we call it a configuration. And what configuration is sort of meant to do is to capture not just the container image that you're using, but also um, the configuration needed for that. And when you edit this service, we actually end up stamping out a bunch of revisions. So in the same way as like, uh, let me do this. And then let me draw. So in the same way as you have like a, like a GitHub repo, when you make edits to that GitHub repo and like commit those changes, if you produce revisions there. This is sort of what we do with um, the key native service is we capture edits to it and then produce revisions uh, as if like Kubernetes had its own sort of linear history. Um, and then that gives you the interesting thing where you can, so this sort of is owned by this, that's sort of on the right. Then you can have the route and start pointing at different revisions. So I can say like, oh, we, um, route A goes to here. Uh, I want the canary. So that's my next revision to point to here. And then let's say like uh, future points to here. And then um, I can roll back as I see fit. And um, and the revisions are immutable. So the kind of the, the reason they're kind of like in a Git history, like you don't want to 
um, delete it. What if you need to make edits, you would want to create a new revision and then roll the traffic out smoothly using traffic splitting and things like that. Um, this is sort of like the then the domain model that we have in Knative Serving. So like, again, the service uh, has a route that sets up the routing that points to a whole bunch of revisions or this configuration. And revisions get stamped out as you edit um, that behavior. Um, yeah, are there any questions? Because I think like I've covered the domain model and I can kind of just jump to like a demo if people want to see that right away. Yep, uh, I think uh, there are no questions as of now, uh, but if there are, please feel free to drop them in the chat section. And uh, we have the Kennedy folks and we have Dave to answer them live. Uh, so this is the time that you can answer anything on serving or the uh, domain thing that just uh, Dave just explained uh, with the different revisions uh, and the Canary and the rollbacks. So I think we can, once we see it in a demo, maybe it will be more clear for the folks and they have some questions. So let's move on to the demo. Sure. Uh, one plug I do have is there's a book called Key Native in Action. It was written by Jacques Chester, who's a ex-pivot, but um, also part of the community. Um, the book is available for free if you Google the title and type VMware. VMware is sponsoring the book, so you just enter in your email address and things like that. And it will go into like a deep dive of everything, like routing, auto-scaling, inventing, et cetera. So um, I just want to plug it because I think it's a great resource. Um, so, yep. I think that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe you can drop in the link, uh, to me in the private chat and I can, uh, you know, just uh, oh, yeah. send it, yeah, I can send it across. Uh, so I think that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Canadian in action. Uh, so you can get the, uh, the e ebook version free of course. So I think make use of it, uh, and you know, uh, have, have that downloaded and start reading that. So I'll immediately, I have, I'll paste that in the chat section. Here you go. Okay, um, so kind of my setup here, as people can see, is I have sort of like my shell, and then right here I'm just listing all the revisions every second, and down here I'm listing all the revisions, or sorry, all the pods every second. Um, is the, can you see that clearly, or should I make the text larger? Yeah, a bit larger would be better. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo. We'll just make it like 30. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, how's that? Yep, that, that's good. OK. Um, so first off, uh, let's just make our first service. So up here, you can kind of see I'm creating a service. I gave it the name website, and I gave it, um, oh, is it sort of cut off? Oh, yeah, it did get cut off here. Uh, I give it the image names. This is running a website. And then uh, I actually named the specific revision. Let me make my screen a bit wider. I think. There. OK, and it's actually up and running. So um, what I, I guess the one thing to show is sort of the cluster setup. So I'm running on GKE, and um, this is just general GKE stuff. This is the key native thing. So um, I know Carlos was running for auto TLS uh, HBO1. Um, I'm actually using Cert Manager. Um, I think Carlos was using Courier for his ingress. I'm actually using Contour. Um, so this is what Carlos was kind of highlighting that. Um, we, our networking stack is pretty pluggable. So depending on your need for, um, let's say if you're like an Istio shop or if you're a Contour shop or a Courier shop, then you can, um, Keynative works with all of these, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're a provider of like set ingresses or things like that, then um, you can, we have plug points for you to enter in. So to recap, I made, the service, it has a website, and you can see that the pod wasn't running, or the old one was terminating, and here's the new one running. Um, so this is the new fancy website. It's got the flashy globe, and it has, I can spin it around and do things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so then as, let's say I'm, and the, like I mentioned, this was using Contour. Um, 
that's my ingress, et cetera. So now let's make some revisions. So you can see I have sort of this named revision. It's receiving all the traffic here, and there's actually like a pod here. Um, so let's make a bunch of revisions. So the first one is I'm updating the website. I'm changing the dot color. I'm going to make it red. So you can see it's there. Um, this is not going to reload fresh because it's serving different websites. But if I refresh it, now you can see that it's red. So let me do green. The thing to note is right right now, the way the traffic is set up is to always go to the latest. So you can see red is here. And then once green deploys, it, it shifts all the traffic to green. So then I can go like this. And I do a refresh. And I'm still hitting the same domain. And I'll do one more color, blue. Maybe you can see blue showing up here. And then once that deploys, the traffic's all going to sh split, shift over. And then now I have blue. Um, so then if I like make a, if I want to roll back, then what I would do is essentially just shift the traffic. But let's say I want to go back to green website, green, I think just a hundred. You can see that this went back to a hundred and then I can just do a refresh. So this is what I meant by the rollback. And it's all really quick where um, it's using um, the network tier to do the rollback, as opposed to if you're using Kubernetes deployments, you're actually redeploying a whole set of pods um, to do the turnover or to the rollback. And that can cause a potential disruption while this was pretty quick. And you can kind of see here that like, hey, the red um, pod is sort of terminating. Um, and now it's gone because like not, we're not serving that traffic anymore. And so this is what I meant by like um, Knative offering that sort of automated auto scaling to zero, where you don't need to. And this is what Carlos also highlighted that like, hey, I have all these services packed onto here, and I can technically, if someone comes in and wants to hit like the um, the default one, they kind of can't do it now. But let's say for example. Um, I had tags. So what you kind of see here, there's these routing tags. Um, that makes each revision sort of addressable. So let me do that and kind of highlight what that means. So I added tags to all these revisions. And what that means is there's sort of like a structure on the URL. So if I just do the default one, now you can see default spinning up the container and it's running and I've already hit it and I got the original, I'm hitting this first revision. Uh, let's go to red. You can see I can target that specific revision. But if I go back to the original domain for my service, it's always gonna hit the green because the traffic's there. Um, and any questions so far? Uh, no. OK. So this is where it gets a bit interesting. So like I can have tags for my revisions. Uh, that lets me hit the revision directly. And you can kind of see like it will then spin up the revision on demand. Um, now let's do a little bit of traffic splitting. So what I'm going to do is this command kind of splits the traffic evenly between the red, green, and the blue. So you can kind of see the numbers there. Um, so now when I hit the service URL, which is just a website, .default key native fans, you can see it's refreshing and doing the traffic split. The delay is actually when it's spinning up the cold starts. So there's a blue, red, and green. Great. Um, so that's sort of like, I covered a bit of traffic splitting and I covered sort of the tags. Now, what's kind of crappy is all the dots are the same color. That's not really fun. Um, so let's imagine a new VP joins the company, spins up a new org and they're responsible. I'm responsible for the website, but they're responsible for the color. So 
Um, I'm going to create a new service that I'm going to call. Uh, I'm going to call it the color service, and it has a. I gave it a revision name of random. So you can kind of see the color here. Now it's set to 100%. Now, what does this do? Let me just show you. So I'm going to curl this color service, and you can see that it's just giving me random right now, uh, red, green, and blue arrays. So let me update um, my website to point to the latest traffic. So right now it's pointing to blue, but I'm also going to update it. I'm going to update my website to use this color service. OK, so we have. I'm changing, getting rid of that dot color, and I'm adding this sort of color service using that URL that I is up here. So now I'm getting. Okay, so that's deployed. Now what this does is this color service will start making a whole bunch of requests to get a whole bunch of colors. Um, and the thing to note here is you can see that like oh oh and it refreshes so you, you see the like how the dots are higher i'm actually uh rendering the height as the latency so you can see that like as the requests go in the latency is pretty constant it's not zero because it's not on the surface of the sphere but it is a bit higher um so now let's say vp on the color service has a whole bunch of requests. Um, so they need to um, make a whole bunch of revisions. So let's do, a, let's do a bunch of that. So for example, I'm going to create a revision that's red. And I'm going to actually add a delay of 100 milliseconds. So this will actually become the default um, color. So then you should see these go red all of a sudden. And then it's a little bit higher than before. OK, let's add some new revisions. Let's do green. So then these will end up switching to green. You can see how it did it halfway, which is pretty cool because I didn't see that before. Um, and this is where I'm going to do the traffic splitting. So let's say, for example, um, oops. So now I'm traffic, traffic splitting with the color service. So the website's hitting the default one, and you can kind of see it's like an even 50-50 split. Like it looks like a kind of like a apple that you don't want to eat. Um, and let me just make sure. OK, that's set up. And let's change the traffic split. Um, I have set 1 and 99, so it means then the red, uh, did it change? Oh, yeah, there we go. So you can see now with the traffic split, it's it's better to visualize this way when you like, I guess for context, there's about 5,000 dots on this sphere. So, and in order for the browser to make that many requests really quickly, you have to change this persistent connection per server in Firefox. So I'm making about 1,500 requests. Um, but now it's very clear to visualize the traffic split, right? Like, hey, there's about 99% of the time it goes to the green, and 1% um, of the time it hits the red. And then I can easily kind of like change that. So let's do let's flip it the other way around, 10% to 90. And you can see it's sort of like updated real time as it's making the request. Um, and then this is going to refresh. And then you'll see the top for the new set of things. Um, and that that's like the gist of traffic splitting and the revisions. And I can, for example, do the rollback as well. Um, so if let's say, for example, whoops, I must have hit something. 
let's say like, okay, you got to roll it back. I need to switch it back to random, how it was before. Then let's do that. And you can kind of see it did it that way. And you can see a bit of latency bump as we did the switch there. Um, and that's that's sort of the traffic splitting, the rollbacks, and how revisions can be used to enable that. Um, I don't know if there's any um, people have any questions right off the bat. Yep. Uh, so there are there are actually uh, a couple of questions uh, uh, and also a couple of comments that that I would like to show. Like first of all, like sure. a really cool dashboard that it is a really cool demo. Uh, so cool dashboard. Billy says it's it's really really cool stuff. And Carlos uh, mentions like a uh, nice demo. We should add this as a tutorial to the K Native website. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, uh, Rashmi says like a very uh, cool to try visualizing and understand. Understanding becomes really easy uh, with with this particular example. Uh, so uh, one question is like how we can gradually roll out. So you you mentioned like we can we can update uh, the traffic. We can spread the traffic evenly by you know uh, update the traffic when when we are happy with the website. But uh, is there a way to gradually roll out so that we don't need any manual intervention? Uh, like like uh, it's it's first a few percent, then it raised uh, goes to fifty percent and seventy percent. Then yeah. So um, I would I would probably like preface this discussion as if you're going to um be more advanced where you do these rollouts, I would highly recommend getting like a like a good CD continuous delivery solution because you want to do rollouts, you want to capture metrics, and then you want to continue the rollout when the metrics satisfy um, your need or sorry, uh, when the metrics like kind of indicate things are good to roll out because you don't want to do the rollout and then all of a sudden uh, things are blowing up and you just do it for no reason. Um, but we still offer uh, an annotation to help with this. So there's a, I think, rollout duration. Yeah, here. So if you don't have a mature um, service, or sorry, continuous delivery infrastructure, we do offer kind of like the lazy person's <laughs> rollout duration. So what this means is um, if you update this config map, and then set this rollout duration to 30 seconds. I think you have to, excuse me, add an annotation to the service, um, or maybe it's just this. But what this ends up doing is like, um, it'll when you create a new revision, because um, I showed you before here that like when you create a new re revision, depending on how you have your traffic pinned, it will, you can pin it to the latest revision. And when that happens, you saw sort of that gap in that rollout. Um, but what you could do is you could do it slowly over time. So this rollout duration, if you kind of configure Knative, will then do that transition from the old service to the newest one. Um, and let's say like this is what, like over five minutes, um, six minutes. And then it will actually update the, the traffic block percentage um, very slowly. So you can kind of see like, okay, first it did 1% and then over some duration, it will like do the full transition. Um, we could test it out quickly. Let me see if I can do this. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, in the meanwhile, you're trying. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to summarize this. Uh, so, so gradual rollouts, why they're important is uh, say that you have a mature application. And uh, uh, so what you can do is you can have the SLOs defined. So I was uh, earlier, uh, I think 12th of July, there was a stream that I did with Captain. So Captain is, is a very good tool, which has a built in all, all, a lot of features with, you know, uh, the SLO things. Uh, so there, if you you know uh, you can get the SLOs met the criteria for this particular application, then you can have the gradual rollouts. So that makes a good use case where you have uh, the uh, the SLOs met for a particular application when you deploy a change or when you deploy a new version of the application or the service, and then uh, after meeting all the metrics, all the criteria uh, that that okay, all the all the boxes are checked, uh, then you can actually do. 
uh, the next, I mean, you can actually increase the traffic and then you can, you know, continue till it reaches 100%. Uh, so that's how you can uh, actually achieve, uh, you know, uh, from dev box to production, uh, reaching uh, the dev box to production, each of the issues or something like that. Uh, while you are also uh, meeting the all the metrics, all the SLOs uh, in between, because you wouldn't want, uh, as Dave mentioned, like you wouldn't want a uh, a bad service or uh, you know uh, something goes wrong when you are uh, just increasing the percentage after a certain amount of time uh, that should be like if you are really pretty sure or you are just changing the color uh, so you can actually do that because that, you know that would work uh, but obviously the, the use cases would be complete complex and uh, you you will be having uh, you know that sort of maturity model and that then this rollout gradual rollouts would actually make much more sense also, uh, Ville and Carlos uh, mentions um, do, did mention in the chat that uh, there is uh, a meetup which is happening tomorrow, uh, where they'll be talking more about uh, the rollout experiments with the metrics and uh, meeting the SLOs to find the YAML. And uh, also, uh, Carlos mentioned like there is uh, Knative uh, and uh, Captain works very well with Knative, and you can you can you know. Uh, very well do that so i think uh, that's that's pretty interesting so make sure you attend tomorrow's company meetup of k native where you'll be having a deep dive of uh, you know uh, this particular section on uh, the rollout cool um so i set the duration to 60 i'm assuming that's 60 seconds um so i updated the traffic to be point to the latest which is green so that's why everything is green so i'm gonna do a deploy for Whoops, I don't know why my... I'm going to deploy a blue color and see how that works. Um, so you can see I set the RGB to blue. And then you can see the rollout. It looks like it's happening, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> oh, I also didn't realize that. Um, the CLI shows the rollout, so you can kind of see it happening live. And then I think the next duration you'll see more blue. So, so now it's having almost, it doesn't look like it's 50 50 though. Huh, weird. So I expect it to be all blue now. Oh, there we go. So the rollout did happen, but it's interesting that the traffic split didn't look representative. But it, but I'm not looking at the back of the sphere, so maybe that's why. Uh, OK. Um, uh, OK. So. That's sort of the traffic splitting in the rollout. The next thing I wanted to kind of highlight is sort of this tag digest bit. Um, and what does it mean to tag digest? Um, so let me just do an example here and say, uh, I'm going to deploy a new service, the Nginx service. I'm going to do to port 80. And then um, I'm just going to include this flag for our CLI that says no lock to digest, because our CLI does sort of this. Um, we also have some good document, got documentation about this. Whoops. So I would encourage folks to read this as well. But the sort of the gist is that um, if you, so let me do this service, uh, describe Nginx. So here's my Nginx service. Um, and if you take a look at, so I can hit it. Take a look at the YAML. And I look at what the image was set. I essentially just set it to just Nginx. Um, and that in Kubernetes defaults to latest. So we'll always fetch the latest engine, Nginx. But let's say, for example, um, what uh, Knative actually does for you I'm going to kind of show you first. Uh, get pod. 
So there's Nginx. I'm going to show you what the image is here. Um, so you can see that the image here that we're using, it's weird that it's showing the SHA. Um, it's really this one, actually. Um, so the image that the pod is using, actually, hold on. I kind of want the pods back. Uh, let me do deployment. Build down. Okay, here. So, um, I guess to re recap what I was just kind of poking at is in the service, we described we want the Nginx latest, but then when, um, I guess what happens here is a little bit behind the scenes is eventually the revisions produces a, a deployment. And in this process, when we make this, um, we take a look at the image and we turn the tag into a digest. And what is the digest? It's actually this unique hash of that image content that is sort of like locked and fixed. So think of uh, when you do like Ruby development and you have your gems and you want to create a gem lock file so that way you can make things, make the build reproducible. And that means that all the deployments and then kind of then here, like all the pods that get spun out. Uh, I'll just use the pencil. So all these pods for the same deployment, they actually end up using the same image container. And the reason why we do this, and we also kind of like talk about this here, is that um, Kuber the defaults in Kubernetes aren't fantastic. So for example, if I'm running on uh, like a pod on a node and that has a cached image, like an Nginx, it might be, it might just use that image that's locally in the cache. Unless I, because this is the default, right? If not present. Um, unless you change this to always pull, then you're always pulling. But then you kind of don't get a benefit of the caching when you want to take advantage of it. Uh, and that means you can lead into weird situations where like, let's say I set my app, my website to V1, and all of a sudden it needs to scale up. And let's say someone for some reason accidentally pushed a new pushed a new image and tagged it V1, then I could actually end up on some nodes running the old image, and then on some other nodes I can actually um, be running the new image, and that could cause potential blow up, right? Like for example, um, because we scale down to zero you can see like all these scale down to zero. If I were to change that image and uh, then it scaled up to zero, if there's no guarantee that image will still work, right? Um, and that's sort of a reason why we do this sort of tag to digest resolution. So um, I would highly recommend people go to this part of the website, skim over here, um, maybe not this part, but like this presentation here um, that Matt Moore did really has some good summary of like why we do this. <laughs> Literally, it's, it's just like a, it's an explosion. It's funny because I had another similar uh, presentation about config maps changing because like you can bake it. Config maps don't update um, if you if apps just read them once, right? So similar thing with config maps, you have the same problem with uh, like images. And these are sort of just highlighting that like what's in the registry can differ than what's on your pod. And then what's between nodes can actually differ, but there's no, you don't have guarantees that these all work and are compatible, right? So um, that's just sort of my, I'm gonna close this mirror board because it seems to be killing my computer. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to highlight with um, the tag to digest because, um, and why we do that resolution as we convert your revision. Because I think if you look at the revision, um, let's take a look at Nginx, four zeros. Um, let's look at the YAML. 
you can see here, that's the image you wanted, but we resolved the digest to that, the latest. We resolved the tag, the latest tag to the digest here. Um, that's sort of just a tidbit. And I think it, knowing that and knowing that this is sort of like a subtle, very subtle issue with Kubernetes, um, it's something to watch out for, especially when you have workloads that are scaling very dramatically, right? Um, cool, any questions on that? No, nope, no questions on tag. Uh, and I have pasted uh, the link for tag resolution in the chat section. So I think uh, I think that's pretty interesting uh, to see, like, you know, uh, the presentation that the small link that why we resolve tags. Uh, so I think that's pretty interesting to understand, uh, you know, why, why that is actually important and what problem it is trying to solve. So and it is actually interesting uh, to see that, you know, uh, it, it makes sense to have that particular thing. Cool. Um, OK, I'll change gears to auto TLS. I'm going to just kind of highlight um, how I set it up. So kind of what I highlighted earlier is I'm using Cert Manager. And I actually have a domain name and stuff set up with um, Google Cloud DNS. Um, so I think all I needed to do, whoops, not my desktop. Um, is all I needed to do was configure cert manager uh, like so. So for example, I just created a DNS issuer. You can see the solver here. Here's my project. You don't know my key. And I'm using the production Let's Encrypt. Um, and then the only thing I believe I needed to do is um, tell Knative, so I configured uh, the cert manager config to use that cluster issuer. And the other notable thing that I did is I gave my GKE worker nodes, um, actually not not the nodes, but actually the cert manager service account, I modified that to have this annotation. That then picked up picks up kind of like a GCP workload identifier, uh, so this DNS solver. And this solver service account has access to my Google Cloud DNS to like do the DNS challenge. Um, so there's like a little bit of setup because like what Carlos did yesterday with HBO one is actually much easier to do because you don't have to um, set up cert manager or anything else to reach out into the DNS provider. But there are trade offs, right? Like for example, I think there's about a rate limit of 50 certs a week, I think. Um, but if you're creating lots of revisions, what's good about DNS uh, challenges is that you get wildcard wild card certs. Um, so that way you can provision more revisions that have certificates, um, but with a little bit of upfront work. Um, so right now, my thing is disabled. So let us. Um, let me do this first. Uh, I'm going to just update. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to turn off the rollout duration. And I'm going to enable auto TLS. OK. Uh, so then at some point, I'm going to switch over these pods to do a service list. Uh, and then with that enabled, it should actually be um, doing the certs. So for example, if I do get, I think it's CR, uh, CRS, no, what was it called? Do, do, do. It is CSR. So this is a certificate signing request. So you can kind of see if I do. Uh, sure, something. Oh, I always do this. <laughs> that's to be not enabled, but enabled. I guess that's like a That's a bug you should file. Uh, okay. 
then I would expect. Oh, there, okay, it already worked. So now, hey, guess what? I've sort of upgraded. I'm a bit more legit. Oh, well, this is where my DNS craps out. So let me do reset. Uh, what was it? I always have DNS problems on this when I do the switch over. It's weird. I don't get the IP. Uh, uh, weird. But anyways, I think if I give it a minute, Nginx, yeah, it's <laughs> always with DNS. I think I need to give it like a minute. This is like something I notice happens all the time. Um, oh, the flusher. Okay, hold on, Reese. I actually have. Um, I made a script to disable carbon black. Oh yeah, reset DNS. Okay, that's what it was. And Z shell. Okay. It's weird because I don't expect that I need to reset the DNS, which is weird. I don't know why my thing happens. Um, well, this is interesting. Okay. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Um, so that's not working. Or so now we're secure. But we also should update um, our website so that it uses the secure color. Let's do that. So I'm changing the traffic to be latest, and I'm setting the revision name to secure. And you can see the HBS is here. So what I'm doing is I'm changing um, changing the website to point to a secure color endpoint. So if I do a refresh, then we should see colors coming in. But my color is blue. It's interesting to see the latency pop up there. Let us update the color uh, service. I want to make it random. Uh, how do I do that? Oh, I think it's here. No. Uh, let me just delete it then. Can service delete color. And I'll just recreate it from scratch. Because I want the cool random colors. So you can see it goes it goes black when the requests fail. Okay, I'm just going to refresh to make new requests. Oh, new one. It hasn't gotten the updated cert yet, so let's just double check. So I need to wait a. When this color gets its cert, then this will work because I think the requests are timing out. Let me just check. Uh, it's approved, so we're just waiting for it. So hopefully we didn't go through our quota. Always DNS challenges. Um, OK, well, while that's working, so generally, um, that's sort of just TLS in a nutshell. Once you configure it, if, <laughs> if you don't have these DNS problems that I have, then you automatically get this um, certificate. And um, then you can hit it. So for example, the Nginx thing I had before now also has an SL sort in front of it. Um, and this is where I want to kind of go into next, where 
Uh, we covered auto TLS. Now I kind of want to cover the domain mapping. So domain mapping is kind of like a new resource. And what it allows you to do, it allows cluster two things. It allows operators to sort of delegate privilege um, to app developers to say, like, um, to change this URL or to not change it, but have a top level domain name or technically any domain name um, for that can point to like a K native service, um, uh, even like a route. I also know Carlos yesterday used it to point to a broker. And then what that does, it actually exposes that thing via a different domain. So here's an example. Um, let's say we're becoming a bit more legitimate now. So we're not going to be key native fans, but let's say like, I'm going to make a business. So I got the creative.biz and I'm going to, this is the domain name and I'm going to reference the web website. So that's going to make a domain name and let's do another one. So let's say Nginx is now becoming key native business. So I'm going to point it to this Nginx um, uh, K native service. So what this sort of what, what I just did explicitly is um, I think it's just domains domain oh domain list. Uh, it's funny because you even see the auto TLS working here. Um, it's interesting that it didn't work on this one or maybe it just delayed. So now I can hit instead of hitting this domain that was secure before. It creates a mapping. It's weird how it force it the other way. Now I have nginx keynative.biz. Um, and I did a little shortcut. Let me just kind of highlight. Um, reason why. So there's a this. I mentioned the operator and sort of the app developer split and. Uh, here, sort of this property that if you um, if you own your own cluster, you're an app developer that also manages your cluster. This is setting this property to true will allow you to create domain mappings right off the bat. But if let's say for example you're in this multi-tenant environment, you actually don't want um, any user to just create domain mapping because all of a sudden I can like hijack a domain name and point to um my service and all of a sudden like i'm phishing you and and things like that that's where you'd want the operator to actually create these sort of domain claims um in carlos's video yesterday you saw that that's what he did explicitly but if you own your cluster you can actually just create set this to true and then this will just kind of have domain mapping work out of the box so you don't have to actually do anything but in in reality the more secure stance that we took is you need to either set this flag to true or an operator has to come in and allow you to use said domain name. Um, and yeah. So I don't, it's interesting that like, so it's, oh yeah. So here's the TLS. It worked on this one again. So now we're legit business. We're, <laughs> we have a sphere that has some dots and we can hit kdo.biz and it works. Um, I don't know why my auto TLS crept out on the color service. Let's take a look. Uh, KN service list here. Yeah, interesting. I think we're being rate limited potentially. Uh, let's, update the, let's update the website to not use the secure color service. Um, just so I can go on to you know, like the auto scaling demo. Okay. So I'm just deploying a new instance of the website that points to the um, just this domain name. So I don't think we're going to get a cert for that. This happens when you have these like DNS issues sometimes. OK, so if I do a refresh, uh, did I point it to the right one? What's the, let me just double check color. 
default. So I don't expect to, whoops. This to, oh, it actually is working here. Oh, no. Okay, so the unsecure works. Why did that? Oh, new one, hold on. Can revision list. Close this out. Uh, okay, let's make sure we're pointing to the right. Make sure that this URL got updated properly. Uh, it did. Color, can you need fans? Uh, interesting. So then what's the... Yeah, we're getting network errors. Whoa. Okay, hold on. When there's lots of failures, I log a lot, and then it causes things to... Oh, okay, hold on. Uh, okay, let's do this again. For the auto scaling, I'm just going to do the classic delete everything. <laughs> And then can service delete color. I'm going to get rid of auto TLS. Since I don't know why I have DNS issues. Uh, disabled. Okay. So I'm going to just recreate my original color service. And then I'm going to have my, whoops, create my uh, website that points to it. Give me one second. And hopefully that will just, Okay, so we're back in business. Um, uh, any questions on domain mapping? I think it's fairly straightforward. As long as you configure your resolver, either DNS or HPS, then it kind of works. I get these weird DNS problems. I don't know if it's my firewalls or not, um, but that's about it. So I just what I did just now is just change everything to be secure, so that way we could see the colors and the request going to the color service. So I'm gonna shift gears, and I have. Um, I can do auto scaling super quick so people can see. Um, any questions before that? Uh, no, but there are a couple of comments that I think uh, that you can read definitely. Uh, sure. I mean, definitely can read. Uh, so Carlos has mentioned like um, about, can you explain about the cluster scope and cluster domain claim? Um, yeah, so kind of what I mentioned before is I don't want to just um, hijack, let's say for example, I have a one kidney of service and this is a website. Um, so as an example, kidney.biz. <clears throat> this should actually go to the same website actually here. So this just maps to here. Um, I don't want, if when you're in a multi-tenant environment, let's say you're hosting Knative and opening it up to the public so people can come and run uh, these services, um, you don't want someone to all of a sudden claim like, for example, like credit card, <laughs> knative.biz or like uh, payments. Um, so as part of the domain mapping, there is, uh, do I have it here? Let me bring this up quickly. Um, so domain mappings, uh, make this big, 
Domain mappings kind of can point to a service. They can point to routes. They can point to anything addressable. So there's also like a broker. Um, but what you need for a domain mapping to work is sort of like a domain claim. And this is sort of like a cluster scope object. And um, this needs to exist. And what this sort of means is like you knative.biz can be created in namespace like default as an example. Um, and this is something an operator would do. So if you're a multi-intent environment, an operator, you would have to like call an operator and say, hey, I need to use this domain name. So they'll make a claim. And that way you can create this domain mapping and point it to whatever you need it to do. Um, and this is sort of like a default security stance um, that I think is positive. It does cause more friction, for example, uh, you don't want to have to create this every single time if you own the cluster. So we have a flag that just does that for you. And that flag is only allowed for an operator to set. But if you're an app developer who, excuse me, like is in charge of the cluster or have full control of it, then you'd probably don't want to create these mainly. You just want them to create it by default. Um, and that, that's how we have this, we have these separation of, of concerns and that gives us a better security posture. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna do the auto scaling. So the auto scaling, what I wanted to highlight was, okay, um, right now, let me get this set up. So I'll do KN, watch my pods. See, we just have sort of the color service offering random stuff. Um, and right now, it's that one deployment is, or that one pod technically is servicing all these requests. Um, but let's say I have a function or some reason, kind of like Carlos mentioned, I have an app, but I can only really handle one request at a time. Um, so let's update our color app so that it only handles one request at a time. And I'm also going to limit, I'm gonna stop the auto scaler from scaling it up. So it's gonna be just one request and handled by one pod and everything else is gonna start getting queued up by our um, kind of like uh, the component, our activator component. Uh, this should be update. Oh, sorry, hold on. Z shell is not, what is it complaining about? Meta name, delay value, container concurrency. Uh, oh, so I do, I have it named. Give me one second. I'm going to just say revision name. Uh, let me do this, hold on. When I created it, I gave it a name, but I don't want to delete color. And recreate the color service, but I'm not going to give it a name. That allow me to make edits a bit more easier. Okay, it's back. Okay, so. This is the, this one's getting shut down. That was the old name revision, um, which I deleted. Here's the new one. Okay, so let me change. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna set the pod or the revision to handle only one request at a time. That's this concurrency limit. And I'm also gonna set the max scale to one. So we're gonna see, hey, what happens when I make 5,000 requests? Um, to a single service that has an, also an artificial delay of 100 milliseconds. And this is where it gets cool. So you can see that the latency keeps growing. So, and because it's kind of like a big circle, it just keeps going and going and going. So it's kind of actually making a cone. Um, so, and what is like, how do I, what does this visualization mean? It means that <laughs> these requests are not gonna be handled anytime soon. It's like going off to infinity, right? 
Um, and that's why I wanted to do this visualization because you can actually see um, like, hey, all these the dots that haven't been processed yet are queued, but the ones that are getting queued are just taking longer and longer. But we're actually queuing these resources, right? For example, this one, um, it's actually sending this one, uh, that pod, and it's going forever, forever. And eventually this will be like a crazy massive sphere, um, but that's gonna take forever. So let's speed things up. Let's make it 10 instances. Let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm gonna update it. So there's 10 instances or allow the auto scaler to scale up to 10 instances. So you can kind of see here, hey, now we have way more deployments and pods spinning up. Let me refresh this, do it from scratch. So you can see it's not a huge spiral, but it's, you can see that because it's much further apart that there is, um, it seems to be more bounded, right? There is a delay. It looks like it's kind of consistent because now we're kind of getting that sphere shape coming all the way down. Um, and this is with like 10, uh, excuse me, 10, um, 10 pods handling one request at a time. So here it's kind of cool because you can actually like visualize um, how the requests are coming and it's fairly delayed, but you can see the delay is pretty cons pretty um, consistent because of the shape of, because we can still see in the shape of the sphere. Okay, so let's move on to what happens when I have 50 pods. So this is going to make, I think, a new revision for. So I'm going to do a refresh. So the the three will scale down because I'm going to cancel all these requests. And then you can see with 50, you can see that it's not as good as having um, that one pod that can handle as many containers, but it is much more manageable, right? You can see that it pretty much a sphere. It's much closer. Um, for those that have tuned in late, the height is sort of the the, the response time that I'm measuring. And, but it looks like there might be some buffering. So let's next just bump it to 200. So I'm saying, um, I'm gonna allow the auto scaler to scale it up to 200 requests. So I think these are all the old requests. So I think this was sort of part of the, tr <laughs> the the transition, right? There's no, like, it wasn't a clean transition, so it caused a bunch of delays. Um, so, but then I think once it refreshes, then it's going to be much closer to the sphere when you have, I think, 200. Or it seems closer. Actually, let's see how many pods we have. Uh, so it's still creating a bunch. Let me, whoops, uh, get pods, grep that. How many do we have? Uh, I screwed up, whoops, two gets. So we actually have 200 pods and that's what's servicing all these requests. So you can see that it's much more tighter, but it was cool to see that when we only had one, then it was sort of like an infinite spiral going out to to infinity. And that, that's why I wanted, put a lot of time into getting the sphere so that you can kind of visualize these things um, rather than just being like a grid and stuff like that. Um, so that's, uh, that's all I had. Um, auto scaling, there are other noms, that you can tweak in auto scaling. For example, um, if you always want requests to be buffered, because Carlos kind of mentioned yesterday that uh, we have a component activator. So as things are scaling up and requests aren't ready, we buffer requests in the activator and then it sort of um, will hold that request until the service is ready. Uh, but you can also have the activator in there to handle large bursts of traffic, right? Um, those are very uh, unique auto scaling knobs that we have to help with those things. Um, I probably would defer to the, the website or come to the Slack channel and ask auto scaling 
in the auto scanning channel um, questions regarding like what it can and can't do. And also Kidney of Action probably covers these things well, but that's all I had. So I hope you enjoyed my visuals. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I think there are really, really, uh, you know, uh, good comments and Dave really enjoyed the demo and actually, uh, you know, visualizing stuff when you are actually, you know, uh, the, the one pod per, per request going as a spiral. So you can actually see what is happening behind the scenes and uh, slowly and gradually when you uh, scale them and those are handling the request so you can see uh, you know a sphere being formed uh, gradually when you increase uh, to 200 pods and more uh, so a, a really really good comments i would like to pop that up in the chat section uh, on the screen as well so coolest demo ever uh, pretty cool marcus says that we should have it as a default auto scaling sample uh, within k native and uh, very so one, one cool thing here is I switch the yeah. color service to be one scale again. You can see it now spiraling out. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like Saturn kind of. Yeah. So you can try pretty cool things and uh, great demo again. Uh, the working group approves this demo really cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so really great. So I think Dave, we have covered really good things today for the serving deep dive. That's what actually uh, you know the community and myself and the Kennedy folks would have wanted uh, to see uh, the revisions, what we can do with them, uh, the tags, how they work, uh, and the the domain resolution, auto TLS stuff. And obviously, the, the coolest part, uh, the auto scaling, uh, which you saved for the end, but uh, it was really dope uh, to see, you know, how, how it is getting uh, worked in action. Uh, so, yeah, I think definitely this is going to come in uh, one of the demos or in, in the K Native website for sure. Uh, because if not, then I would personally, you know, pitch in to contribute uh, <laughs> that. It, it's really awesome. So people should be able to try that and visualize and learn uh, with, with the visualization. So that's that's pretty dope. So thank you so much for giving your time uh, and, and creating such a cool demo, such a cool sphere that can show uh, a lot of things, a lot of latencies that can you know go in further with the auto scaling demos and other stuff. Uh, so thank you, Dave, for giving your time and uh, showing us the, the coolest demo ever. Uh, and uh, once again, thank you to the community uh, for uh, staying with us. Uh, and learning all those uh, deep dive concepts. Uh, so I shared the playlist uh, earlier. So I have created the playlist for Kennedy. So if anybody wants to share that, you can share it. And if anybody wants to share specific videos, you can do that. Uh, there's another session that is coming up on 30th, uh, which is the uh, eventing deep dive. So make sure you set a reminder for that. Uh, again, that is also added to the uh, playlist. So uh, okay, I, I just wanted to say one more thing. I want to give attribution to the sphere. So for example, GitHub and Stripe both had blog posts on how they built kind of like a globe sphere. And I use that to help me <laughs> build this demo <laughs> over the weekend. Awesome. So giving so, credit uh, worth too. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the playlist link uh, that I have posted that is only for the K Native series. Uh, so, anything else, Dave, you would like to uh, say to the community? Uh, I just, it would be good to, um, for people to bring, I think, more user stories to the community. Um, there's a lot of, like, I guess we, we understand people are using K Native in various capacities, but we don't sometimes get that feedback loop. Um, so it'd be great if people um, could come and chime in. I think there's, I don't have the issue handy. Let me see. Um, I think it's, I'll, we just want to, um, I guess to summarize, if anyone has the, maybe like Vlay or someone, um, we want to know who's using Knative. We want to know what problems they're solving and um, how well it's solving those problems for them um, and kind of, create kind of like this user group for people to talk about these things. I think that is um, important. But I can't find, oh yeah, here. I'm gonna post this. And if you are using Knative for whatever reason, please chime in. Um, not, can you share that in the channel? It's a community issue where you wanna know what people are using for and what maturity and things like that. Yeah, great. Yep, uh, already shared in the uh, in the chat. 
So yeah, make sure if you're using Knative, let the folks know, uh, you know, how you're using, how well it is solving the problems, where are the gaps, how yeah. that can be filled, uh, how you can be get involved and solve those gaps. So in all ways, uh, you can, you know, uh, contribute. So there are plenty of ways uh, that you can contribute back to Knative and actually uh, get uh, your use case solved uh, by a feature request or by working on that and and so on. So a great, great ending, uh, Dave. Uh, so that, that was cool. Uh, so again, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on 30th with the eventing deep dive session. Uh, again, thank you, Dave, uh, for spending your time and thanks to the community for uh, staying with us. See yeah. you all next time. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.